Hello guys and welcome back. So today I thought I would do a book haul. Last time I did a book haul I think was in May or March, I can't remember. But it's been a while and whilst I haven't been buying books at the same frequency as before, I do have some books, some new books to talk about. So I'm going to talk about some of the, I'm going to start the book haul first with really books that I have not shown on the channel so far. And then I'll talk about some books that, I, that are new hauls but like I think I've spoken about them in one way or another on the channel. So yeah, so the first couple are going to be like Christmas gifts maybe or whatever. I'll just be sure I only got, only got one book for Christmas. Um, but we're going to talk about this. This was not a Christmas gift but it was bought around Christmas time. Um, my boyfriend and I are buying Christmas presents and you know as a woohoo we bought all the Christmas presents. My boyfriend was like do you want to go and get us a book each? Um, so he got us a book each and I picked up this anthology which is New Daughters of Africa. Um, this is edited by Margaret Busby. I found it really funny, like, <laughs> obviously this cover, this woman is on the hardcover edition and on the paper, this is the paperback edition, I think this was 15 quid, yeah, and the hardcover one is 22 quid, um, but her arm is covering the buy, so it's edited B, Margaret Busby. But anyway, this contains short stories, I think, yes, by loads of black women from Africa. I, I actually it could be wrong, it could just be loads of women from Africa. Um, so <laughs> don't quote me on the fact that they are black. Um, but yes, it's like you can't see from this because it's so small, but it all of this is the amount of um authors contributed to it. And so it's got some faves in here, like my Leslie Loco, I absolutely love her, Yusa Daily Ward, Renny Edo Lodge, Candice Carty Williams. Uh, I'm not saying she's a favourite, I just recognise her name, the other three favourites because I do know them. Um, like I've read their work, it's got Diane Abbott here, if you don't know, if you're not from the UK, Diane Abbott is an MP in the UK. Um, from Labour Party, it's got Rox Roxanne Gay, I know a lot of people read her work. Basically it's got a huge collection of short stories from all of these women. So I think this was an anthology that Margaret Busby produced maybe 10, 15 years ago as well and this is just like the newest edition. So I think this actually was published in 2018 or so, I wanna say. Um, but I, I wanted to get my hands on it since I heard about it being published, like, and I put it on my sort of pre-order list on Amazon and then I just never bought it. I was like, I'll just wait for the paperback edition. And then yeah, when we were there, I was like, what book do I really want? And it was this, so obviously this is gonna take me a while to get through <laughs> because there are so many in here. It's like a thousand pages long, I'm sure. No, it's not actually. It is nearly a thousand pages long, it's got like 920 pages or so, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. Obviously I think it's just going to be covering such a vast amount of Africa in its stories, but obviously so many different writing techniques, so many different talents, so I'm really looking forward to reading this. I'm so glad I have this. So continuing on the same path of books that contain collections from a variety of authors, I also have She is Fierce. Brave, Bold and Beautiful Poems by Women by Anna Sampson. Now this was a Christmas present, so I have the blue version of this. I actually thought they were the same. I didn't know there was like various collections of this, but I had this in my Amazon basket. And I think my boyfriend must have seen it once I was on Amazon one time, so then he got me this for Christmas. Um, but so when I put things in my Amazon basket and then obviously like, I get it, whether it be through Amazon or elsewhere, I delete it. So I went to go and delete it and I was like, oh, the cover's different. Let me just check. I think there are two. I think this one came out in 2018 or maybe 2019 and the, no, no, sorry, they both came out in 2020. I think one came out in like March and one came out in September. So yeah, two different collections, but I think I first heard about this collection, or at least the blue one from Jen's channel, like Jen Campbell. And so I was like, oh great, like, and poetry where you can get like so many different voices or collections where you can get so many different voices. I was like, I'm here for this. Um, so this says here, a powerful collection of 150 poems written by women, from suffragettes to schoolgirls, from spoken word superstars to civil rights activists, from aristocrat ladies to kitchen maids, these are the voices that deserve to be heard. Immerse yourself in poems by Nikita Gill, Wendy Cope, Maya Angelou, Yissa Daly Ward, I don't know why, is that how her name is spelled? Um, Carol Ann Duffy, Grace Nichols, Liz Berry, Jackie Kay, Holly McNish, Imitiaz, Dahaka, Ellen Dunmore, Mary Oliver and Dorothy Parker to name but a few. So I have a collection of Nikita Girls behind me. I love Yusa Daly's work and she, Yusa Daly is also a contributor, an author in this collection. I think I did that because I read her name out loud. I'm just going to see if that's how you spell her name. Okay, 
okay i'm not going mad <laughs> in on the back of this her name is spelled wrong as in like it's her name is y-r-s-a um and it's spelled y-s-r-a I, I guess i wasn't going mad but anyway i think is that, is that how you spell it this is really weird um and i have a chapbook by liz berry that it was called the republic of motherhood that i absolutely loved jackie Kay, she's a well-renowned renowned sorry scottish poet holic witness i've seen her live i really love her um and loads more dorothy parker i know she wrote a poem i'm sure that's quoted in girl interrupted but anyway loads of poems in here so i'm so excited to read this um and just yeah get a range of um works from various poets and then i can pick up their works hopefully during the course of this year so a book that i bought myself which is probably around november it kind of was like a sort of christmas present to myself is the shapeless unease a year of not sleeping by samantha hardy i had another booktuber talking about this and it sounded great this is a non-fiction title talking about insomnia so it says here samantha hardy's insomnia arrives seemingly from nowhere for a year she has spent her nights chasing sleep that rarely comes she's tried everything to appease it nothing is helping what happens when one of the basic human needs goes unmet for samantha harvey extreme sleep deprivation resulted in raw clarity about life itself um original profound the shape is uneasy a startling uh, insightful exploration of memory writing and influence death and grief and the will to survive also how stunning it is this cover um i don't think the paperback edition is out until later in january i'm filming this like a bit earlier than when it comes out i assume it will come out then it might be pushed back who knows um but love this i think the paper version is actually gonna be exactly the same but it's always nice to have a hardcover book um there's nothing underneath it just looks like this um but yes no i'm really looking forward to this um insomnia is something i used to struggle with quite a lot especially as a teenager and i do like frequently or infrequently hmm, but depends how you look at it um suffer with it as well but at present none of that those issues plague me just simply because i'm on medication that helps me sleep but i am very much looking forward to reading this so yeah i can't wait it's actually i don't think i've ever read anything that tackles insomnia i've read stuff to do with sleep um like um, matthew walker's why we sleep but nothing that deals with a memoir that's sort of based around that and honestly not being able to sleep is hell like so i don't know how i'm going to feel reading this if i'm going to feel like it evokes a lot of emotions and sad emotions but i'm really looking forward to it so another book is The Family Upstairs um, by Lisa Jewell. This was actually lent to me, so I'm not keeping it. Um, but I've been reading a lot of thrillers lately, so um, probably by the time this goes up, I will have read this. Um, but I'm really excited. Um, I've heard that this is actually a bit more than just a thriller. Like, it's got more plot to it than just, you know, what happens next. Um, so yeah, it says, The Family Upstairs, one house, two families, three bodies. <sighs> Be careful who you let in. In a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea, a baby is awake in her cot, well fed and cared for. She is happily waiting for someone to pick her up. In the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scored note. They've been dead for several days. Who has been looking after the baby and where did they go? So it sounds insightful. Um, and I'm glad that actually to hear that there's more of a plot than just what what is like who has been looking after the baby, that there's more it's been beefed up a little bit because I think one of the things that I've been finding with thrillers is beyond the story of turning the pages to find out what's next a lot of them in one are very well written and two don't have anything else to them it's just that um thrill aspect the anticipation the anxiety of like what's going to happen next so I'm interested in this and I know Lisa Jewell is quite um well known for her thrillers like I think she is this is like her field her genre and she has a lot of books so she's quite a prolific writer in this area so next I'm going to move on to talk about some books that you guys will have seen me talk about here or there in some way, shape or form, but they're just like new books that have even been hauled to me. Like either I have bought them, they have been lent to me, or I don't know, we'll, we'll discuss as I go through. The next book is Physical by Andrew McMillan. This is actually a poetry collection and I have spoke about this, especially when I talked about my um, reads that I read in 2020, my LGBTQ plus reads that I read for Pride Month. Um, and this is just a wonderful poetry collection. I think Andrew is from Yorkshire. I think I always fuck this up when I try and say it, but yes, yeah, he's from South Yorkshire. Um, and this collection is so nice. It's just really intimate. It's about the male body. It's about male relationships. Um, it's about navigating your life as a gay man. And it's just so raw and intimate. I really enjoyed this collection by far one of the favourite poetry collections that I read in 2020 um, and anything he writes I will pick up so yes definitely if you love a lover of poetry would recommend this I'm um, specifically interested in poetry um, based around LGBTQ plus I would definitely recommend this 
Another book that I purchased for myself last year was I'm Telling You the Truth But I'm Lying by Bassi Ikpi. This is a collection of personal essays. Um, so it says here, in this remarkable memoir, memoir in essays, Bassi Ikpi explores her life as a Nigerian American immigrant, a black woman, a slam poet, a mother, a daughter, an artist, through the lens of her mental health and diagnosis of bipolar 2 and anxiety. I think it's really rare actually that you see people talking about um, bipolar 2, especially black women. Um, so this was really interesting and really insightful to sort of learn about um, her life and sort of how I guess she navigated her life and then that diagnosis and things like that. Um, and it, it was it was a really great memoir. Um, I'll talk about another memoir that I read that was an essay form as well. I don't know if it's because I knew like going into this, this was a collection of essays that actually, whilst it wasn't very linear, it was still very easy to read. Um, I found the way she spoke about her life, all different things that were happening and just sort of really drawing the reader's attention to the sort of numbness or lack of clarity she had around her feelings it was excellent like she's a really good writer like a sharp writer I'd be interested to see what her fiction work is like if she's interested in um, writing fiction um but I thought she did a really good job of conveying to the reader her confusion and just yeah her lack of interest in life and her lack of interest in certain things as they were unfolding and really huge things um, and sort of just yeah going from I guess one extreme to another. Another poetry collection is Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Tristan Matir. So I spoke about this already in my sort of 2020 reading goals and poetry so I won't talk about my thoughts on it too much. Um, but this is a poetry collection where Trista basically imagines, like reimagines Aphrodite and the things that she would say, I guess, about society now. There are also some personal poems from Trista, but there are also some pictures in this. So it's a well-rounded book, I would say. I mean, you get everything in here. Um, it says here, she takes an imaginative approach to self-care with her new collection, Aphrodite Made Me Do It. In this feminist retelling, she uses mythology as a goddess alongside poetry and art to weave a common thread through the past and present. If you let her by the end of this book, Aphrodite will make you believe in the possibility of your own healing. Um, so yeah, if you want to know more about my actual thoughts on the book, I will link that video in the cards and also down below. But that was an interesting poetry collection to acquire. I'm just trying to show you some of the artwork in it. So this was the other book that I was talking about when I spoke about um, another memoir that was in an essay collection. And this is Heavy by Kiese Lehman. I really enjoyed this. I can't now remember what I gave it, either four stars or three stars. Um, I kind of forgot that this was told in essay format and I think the reason I forgot that is because actually a lot of this feels quite linear and then towards the end it's not so then I was a bit like why is this story like not unfolding in like just sorry that like, a lot of it feels chronological why is this not unfolding, unfolding in a chronological way and then I realized actually these are all single essays but I feel like a lot of the essays just pick up exactly where the last one left off so it's a bit like hmm but anyway I bought myself this along with the Shapeless Unease. It was sort of my sort of gift to myself around like November time. And I've been wanting to read Heavy for so long that I was just like, I really need to pick it up. So it's very interesting about this book. I think a lot of people already know this. Maybe you don't, I'll tell you now. Um, but actually I think KSA writes a lot of non other non-fiction and maybe poetry and stuff like that. And I think he was actually commissioned by his publisher to write a book about sort of being a heavy like fat black man in America and it was just meant to be I think about the relationship of like African Americans and food um but it ended up being a memoir as he sort of wrote it and made it took shape it ended up coming out to be this which I think is always really a nice thing to find out about like people's writing processes so it says here Kiese Lehman grew up a hard-headed black son to a complicated and brilliant black mother in Jackson Mississippi from his early experiences of sexual violence to his suspension from college to his time in New York as a college professor Lehman charts his complex relationship with his mother grandmother anorexia obesity sex writing and ultimately gamble gambling <laughs> powerful insightful and provocative this award-winning memoir combines personal stories with piercing intellect to reflect on both abuse and the strife of American society um this book is gripping like it is shocking the level of violence that is inflicted upon him if you want to read this book maybe skip what i'm going to say in this section but the relationship or the relationship the amount of violence is that's thrust upon Kiese is from his mother um, and it's a very interesting relationship because there's still a lot of love between them and I imagine it's a very complex relationship for both of them actually after this I read because I've seen other people talk about this but after he sort of wrote this book because this book is graphic about what his mum does to him and things like that after this his mum has written a letter back to him just basically acknowledging all of these things and wow 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 all rounds that he could write this and his mum could read this and you know 
I guess she, probably she was angry, probably she was hurt, probably she saw the horrible things that she done, but then to write that letter and just be like, you know, I think she says in the letter, like, you know, this is your story, like, I, I can't, like, say no, that didn't happen. And I think those real reckoning moments of people acknowledging the hurt that they've caused is something that I'm not used to. So reading all of this, I was like, wow, like, I can't believe he's laying it all bare, like, this is intense. And then to actually read that his mother has responded, and I think they do have a good relationship now. But yes, the level of violence there and that relationship between your, him and his mum and the closeness and just, yeah. I don't really think I can say more than it, more about it, but this book is so insightful. This is the issue that happens when you do a book haul and you've already read the book. But this book is great, just read it. That's all I can say on it really. Um, I don't know that at this point that I've done a video talking about this, so um, probably not, but yeah amazing book pick it up but be prepared for sort of these trigger warnings for like violence um sexual assault and things like that but that is it for today's book haul so thank you guys so much for watching if there's any books that you see here that you think that remind you of another book you think i might like please let me know because i'd be um glad to purchase it i'm definitely this year um I think I'm gonna buy more books yeah like i, I still have a ton of books that i need to read but i have like i think cleared a lot of space so that I can buy some more books and some more like new out books that I'm interested in. But thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you in another one. Bye!